So if I speak here, it's not it's not audible, right? No, that mic is not working. Your color mic is not working. Yeah, my color mic is not working. Uh, can I? Okay. Test, test. Okay, I think this is for the recording, for the benefit of those who cannot come, but I'll still use this I, because I speak very softly. So, uh, can you see the font on my screen? So, if you go there in one of the stations, um, there's a, um, an icon called uh, Coral, um, Coral Workshop. You just double click that, it will go straight to the GitHub repo. Um, we structure it in a way so that in case there's any update in the script or something, uh, you'll always get the latest version uh, from the um, one of the IoT stations. So um, the goal of this is to um, at least have an experience on how is it like to use uh, um, deploy TensorFlow models uh, using Edge TPU, uh, at least in one of the IoT prototype board that we have, which is uh, Raspberry Pi and Coral Accelerator. And on tops, uh, if you notice at the end of the uh, workshop, we also add another, um, because when it, how can you talk about IoT without e uh, using sensors and uh, LD actuators and all, right? So we, we added an additional uh, a device or a board um, or a hat uh, that sits on top of Raspberry Pi, which is called Sense Hat. Um, Sense Hat is another like um, uh, hat and on top of the Raspberry Pi, which you can use to get uh, uh, other sensor data like uh, temperature, humidity, and um, it has an accelerometer data as well, as well as this uh, uh, can output LED as well as you have the joystick as well. Um, but for this workshop, we'll just use maybe the LED, but uh, at least you, you'll have access to the code. So in case you want to explore later on, on how to use the other APIs of the Sensat, you're able to explore from there. So there's not much prerequisite on this. Uh, mainly the setup uh, that we have, uh, all the um, driver installation that needs, is needed for the HTTP are already there. Um, uh, proficiency in Python because most of the examples that we have are in Python. I think the, the Coral has a uh, API also for C++, but I think we haven't explored it. <laughs> uh, uh, we, we use Python because it's, we feel that it's more accessible to the, the general audience. The first task that uh, you'll be doing as part of that workshop is to prepare the workspace uh, because uh, we have like a number of people um, going there. So w once you... Uh, uh, go into the machine, let's say another person uh, does the changes and all, maybe he wants to modify the script just to uh, check the, the, the behavior and stuff. You don't have to worry uh, on that because what we're going to do is we're going to remove, uh, by this command, we're going to remove the whole folder and we're going to start uh, fresh. Um, the, because the next one will be getting it from the uh, repo repository and clone it and then get the latest from uh, from GitHub. So once that is done, uh, which is uh, uh, I already did, I'm connected to the Pi currently uh, using SSH uh, and as well as uh, uh, VNC uh, because later on we would need the VNC um, to access the camera. So for now I'll just use the the SSH approach uh, so that we can run the commands. The first few tasks that we uh, need to do are command line driven. So we're just going to use uh, the, that um, approach for now. So once you clone this, um, you'll automatically go to the particular uh, Coral workshop directory, which is uh, what we have currently uh, in the terminal. So Coral workshop. Uh, by the way, the, the font of the screen, is it like okay from, uh, or do you need me to increase it a little bit more? Good. Uh, let me just uh, set up that. Uh, appearance, size, um, fonts. It's 18, uh, maybe 24. Is it uh, okay, manageable? Uh, so we'll just use this. So we're in a Coral uh, workshop folder, same as what we have um, 
his team from the uh, repo. So Martin really gave a sort of um, a good introduction uh, um, for the afternoon workshop. So you you would have uh, um, learned about the, the different um, uh, deployment models, um, the t TF Lite, uh, the formats that uh, needs to be deployed, and of course uh, uh, the the advantage of deploying that to edge TPU. So generally, let's say you have a Coral, you bought a, a Coral device, or um, and the next thing that uh, you need to do is, let's say you have your friend, or let's say someone in the morning uh, gave you a model uh, that, hey, uh, friend, uh, can you, I, I really have this nice model about like uh, emotions, can, do you want to use it for your own application, let's say in your Raspberry Pi. So we cannot just take in the, Usually, when uh, in that in the traditional um, um, modeling, the output of the model you have like the PB file, right, the flat PB file, um, we cannot just use that directly. <laughs> uh, I mean, one thing is big, and uh, the other thing is uh, it's not that uh, what you call this. Uh, it's not ready uh, yet for the edge TPU Coral device. Coral device has a number of model requirements. You need to meet those model requirements in order to take advantage of the Coral Edge TPU device. I mean, you can run it on the normal Raspberry Pi, but may not um, take an advantage of the Edge TPU. But for the Edge TPU case, um, there are certain model requirements. And one of them is, uh, one thing is uh, when you are doing your training, uh, you need to do it in a quantization aware training, which I think, um, I think last, uh, anyone who was uh, here last week during the AI day, I heard um, someone um, demoed on like how, how it was done. Um, but f uh, when, why, when we were preparing this um, approach, I think you, you would have uh, heard from Weying also in the morning that um, we had concerns and issues and running uh, quant uh, quantization aware training using uh, 2.0. Maybe that is resolved. Uh, we just haven't found it uh, yet in that matter. So what we're going to do here is uh, I, we're, I'm going to um, use a pre-trained uh, uh, model uh, that was already in TensorFlow Lite. So our, our, start of, uh, our start of the workshop or the input of the data is already in TensorFlow Lite. Um, let's say you have the friend that exported the, the model in TensorFlow Lite, but uh, we cannot just use TensorFlow right uh, directly. And in this sense, it needs to be compiled to a edge TPU model first before we can use it in the device. Let's say we have the TensorFlow Lite. So that's what we have. Um, I'll just show a bit on, um, there are two ways that you can convert this TensorFlow Lite to edge TPU model. There's a command line approach and there's a web, uh, web approach as well. So I'll just uh, show that for a bit. So I'm just going here. Let's uh, go. So because for uh, if you go for the command line approach, uh, then uh, you'll need to install all the things. But why go there if you can just uh, for your purposes? If a browser-based approach is good enough for you, so browser-based approach is the one that I'll be doing. Uh, a while ago, I was discussing about the uh, model requirements, right? Um, you'll, you'll see the number of requirements here. So one of them is quantization aware, the tensor sizes, um, consider compiled and so on. So um, your model needs to be checked on this. Otherwise, if you just randomly, uh, let's say, use uh, the, the, the floating um, uh, approach model and then, hey, I've generated a TF light, then can I use this to uh, just upload in the site? and then download it and run it on my edge TPU. Uh, that doesn't uh, happen uh, because when you upload this uh, into the website without those model requirements, the compilation will fail. So uh, what I'm using currently, uh, how, how, at least to ensure that it's, uh, um, it's done in, uh, in a uh, quantization aware uh, training, uh, there are already, for, for um, for demo purposes, if you want, just want to try, uh, there's already a, a set of ready-made um, uh, quantized uh, aware models that you can just download and use. So that's what uh, we currently have. So this one, the, the TF light that you can see here, the one that is included in the workshop, um, that is already one of, uh, at least two of the uh, popular um, um, 
uh, image net uh, models. One is the mobile net, which is uh, quite small, and then the other one is that inception uh, uh, model. I think we got it from the hosted models. If you go to this uh, link uh, in tensorflow.org, quantized models, you'll see a bunch of uh, quantized image classification models uh, with varying uh, accuracy and model size. So uh, once you download uh, this particular uh, uh, model, or uh, uh, the TensorFlow Lite uh, um, uh, file of that. When you download, you download as a zip. When you unzip it, you'll see various files there. You have the put above, and then one of them is TF Lite. Um, what you'll do with the TF Lite is uh, to I'll just go here to the co corresponding folder where I uh, extracted my uh, what you call this? Extracted my. Uh, my repository. So I'll do just delete this for now. No, I'll just keep it there. So you'll essentially have this file, the inception, and then the other one is mobile net. Right? So once you have that, if I go here, so you'll need to do this uh, one uh, TF light model at a time. So I'll just browse. And then uh, this is the TF light quantized model that I've downloaded from that site. So I'll just open that. It takes a while to, uh, to compile. So it's compiling the cloud currently. And once this is done, you'll, you, it should generate a file, uh, which is, uh, it appends edge um, TPU in the file. So you'll see uh, if, it's, um, if you have uploaded a mobile net uh, quant underscore TF file, it will generate um, uh, another file uh, which you can download, uh, which has edge TPU uh, TF Lite. So this one is the one that is uh, the edge TPU model uh, that we can deploy to the edge TPU. So this compilation happens uh, in the cloud. Uh, in, in uh, at least in this demo, you can do it by a command line. But in our approach, we compile it and then get this. Once we have this, um, the next step is. Uh, Hey, we can use it for uh, uh, classifying images. So why not use that uh, inference in, in the edge TPU? So uh, once you have that, uh, once you, you can download the model, so I'll just download this. Um, once, it, once it's downloaded, it takes like a few minutes. I just place it back in the same test data folder uh, where you got your initial uh, TF Lite files. So at least here you have the TF uh, Lite, which is the quantized model, and then you have the edge TPU model as well. Uh, in the same way, uh, you'll do that for inception, do that also for mobile net, so that later on in the uh, workshop exercise, uh, we can compare uh, these two models and how they perform in, inside uh, edge TPU. So I'm going to ignore this uh, download uh, because I already downloaded previously. And uh, we'll just go straight with the uh, classification. So the two models that we've downloaded are um, MobileNet and uh, Inception. If you download this, uh, you'll notice that the MobileNet is quite, in terms of uh, few MBs only, but uh, the inception when you download this, this is around uh, 40 uh, MB or so. So it's like uh, significantly uh, heavier than the mobile net uh, uh, model. So once we have that, uh, just ensure that we have uh, the edge TPU files uh, in the, let me just uh, increase this font. I think it's not uh, visible uh, at the back. Um, once we have this edge TBUT F light model, just ensure that you have it in the same folder as you have. So we have this uh, edge TBUT F light, one for inception and one for mobile net. So once you have that confirmed, let's do classification. Let's classify this fella. Right? It uh, should be a cat. So cute cat, uh, just ensure that you're in this intended folder so that uh, the script uh, that we intend to run is there. And then once you ensure that, let's uh, try to use uh, mobile net first. Okay, mobile net. 
So the way that uh, we have the classification script uh, where we can input the model and then the, the, the label and then uh, provide also the, the image of the cat, which the, is the image that you can see in the screen. So once we have that, by the way, uh, for this to work, uh, this classify image is part of the uh, default API uh, when you install HTTP, when you follow the um, Coral uh, documentation. So when you have the Coral board or Coral uh, accelerator, generally the first step that you need to do is to set up the API environment, which you will do on your Pi, for example. Once you've done that, then uh, it, you will have um, demo um, uh, scripts like classify image which uh, uh, you can use to uh, test the, the corresponding models once you have the corresponding models. In this case, we're just going to test the mobile net on how it, perf how it uh, is able to classify this particular image. So we're just going to copy this and then uh, paste it here. So enter. So it's able to us, uh, classify it as an uh, Egyptian cat, right? Um, MobileNet is quite interesting. It's quite small. Uh, it's quite fast. But the, one of the comments that the people uh, have with MobileNet is, we'll know in the next example. Uh, it's the same thing. We're we'll going to try in another image using the same uh, model uh, called MobileNet. But this time, we're going to identify this image, right? So we're Singapore, so why not use something from Singapore? So what we're going to do, we're going to copy that, and let's see what mobile net identify or classify it as. So Merlion Park Tower. So the first uh, uh, result is missile. Um, does this look like a missile to you? Maybe, uh, maybe this is like uh, the the. <laughs> The smoke, <laughs> smoke from the uh, left side, and then it's like going through the 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 mouth of the lion. Horizontal yeah, missile. horizontal missile or something. But then that's the mobile net approach, or that that's um, uh, that's what happens if you use mobile net. How about we downloaded two models, right? One mobile net and then one Inception. Um, what's the result if we use Inception instead of mobile net? Remember, Inception was the 40 um, megabytes uh, file that we, we've used to uh, uh, download. So let's try the same uh, image, but using Inception this time. So Inception, Inception HTTP UTF Lite, which is the file that we've uh, um, compiled. Takes a while, so slow. Um, but at least uh, the water part, <laughs> it identifies as a fountain um, because of, of the, I mean, horizontal, is it a horizontal fountain or something? It, it goes from, uh, from, from the side. Uh, at least the water part, it got it right. Um, but uh, when coming back to the models that uh, we've uh, explored so far, so what we did was uh, in, the, in the hosted models, what we did was uh, we got the first one, which is the, at least the smallest, but also the fastest in TF light performance. And uh, compare it with the uh, Inception V4 quantized model, which is the biggest, the heaviest, uh, but also the slowest, right? In, but in terms of accuracy, it has like 79.5 uh, uh, accuracy. The accuracy of top one for mobile net is only around like 39. But uh, you get the speed benefit, which is here, uh, benchmark says is 3.7 uh, milliseconds. So um, at least to do the contrast uh, between the two. So that's what we have. But we'll put the inception and then the, the mobile net uh, models uh, on the side first. We'll come back to that later. Because another thing that um, people are interested or keen to explore with edge TPUs, because generally when we do training, um, Usually we need like uh, huge resources and do it in the cloud, right? Um, but let's say we don't have like internet or let's say we don't have, uh, we need to, ha we have a use case where we need to do at least the training on the edge. Or of course there are like multiple ways of to, to, to do it, right? But one of the ways is maybe not training the whole thing. Uh, how about in, in cases where uh, you already have a, 
base model. In this case, we are using a, a, an extractor. So it's, you have all the layers except for the last one. So that uh, on top of it, we'll uh, have our new data uh, trained so that uh, I can um, learn uh, the, only the last layer for the new data. So the new data that we're going to use here, uh, we're going to use uh, the same thing, uh, the mobile net. But on top of the mobile net uh, structure, we're going to add in uh, flower photos so that it is able to identify, like, is it a daisy, is it a sunflower? I'm not sure if we have sunflower, but we have like around like, I think five classes of flowers that we're going to use. So uh, for this approach, um, as per the documentation, um, the limit is around uh, 200 uh, images per, uh, per label. So that, that's uh, what the documentation currently limits us to do. But the uh, question is, is it good enough? Is that good enough? So um, what we're going to do, um, I've done this already. So if you go to the IoT uh, stations later, just do this. What it will do, it, it will just copy the, the flower data, which has the, all the, the labels, uh, the, all, all the different classes. And then you'll download uh, separately the embedding extractor, which in our case is going to be based on mo mobile net. So mobile net is our starting point. And then uh, on top of that, we'll use the, the new data for Flower to uh, make a new model. Once that is done, um, we can do uh, on-device on transfer learning. So I've done this. Uh, I've downloaded the, the, the photo and also the, the embedding extractor. But let me run again the on-device transfer learning so that we can um, generate again the, the file. So during the, the on-device transfer learning, if you notice, there's a test ratio. The test ratio that we're using here is 0.95. That means um, how, how, how much of our data are we using? If it's like test ratio 0.95, only 5%. So 5% of the data, is it good enough? Uh, then uh, we'll see. So we're just going to, did I copy that? So it's going to do uh, transfer learning currently using the flower data that uh, we've uh, downloaded. So you have tulips, roses, then the Indian, oh, there's a sunflower, and oh, they see. So one, two, three, four, five classes. So it's currently evaluating the scores uh, currently for each of the classes. Um, the top one for this, uh, you'll see later. Um, it's around, uh, the lowest one is around 75% uh, accuracy. But maybe to case on case basis, um, maybe that's good enough. Um, using just five percent of the data and achieving seventy-five, seventy-six. Well, um, yeah, in some cases that might be good enough in terms of, uh, especially in cases where you don't have much memory to hold the data, right? You don't want to have like a, a huge amount of data which uh, occupies space. When you are doing transfer learning on the edge, on the on the cloud, then you can like take as much space as you want, right? But there are certain cases that maybe restricts or constrains you from doing that. That's why uh, there are like cases like this. But w people are um, thinking in terms of this kind of scenario. So at least there's a way if we need uh, to uh, uh, to do the training. So we're left with one more um, one more evaluation that is for the Daisy. They see that's uh, the partner of Donald. <laughs> I'm sure it's a Disney thing. It takes a while. So if you go through the workshop later, um, the two bottlenecks usually uh, is on the first side, or first front when, when you're cloning the repos, which is like around five minutes. Uh, the next one is this, <laughs> because this one takes time. But I mean, we want still want to do it because um, it's uh, transfer learning, and we want to see how it uh, performs, or how how it's being used in the in the uh, what you call this in the edge devices. So now you can see um, for the top one is around seventy nine, which is like using five percent of the data achieving top one for seventy nine. Maybe in some cases it's already good enough. So let's say um, we've done with the training. Um, 
why not uh, have another like um, uh, image that uh, hey I have, a, I have a model just trained uh, let's see if it, it can identify this picture so I'm going to download this uh, rose if it's not already downloaded so it's already downloaded here rose uh, jpeg then uh, the model that uh, the new model uh, that has flower information uh, we're going to run uh, and check whether it identifies the the rose as the flower so you have here right you have five uh, classes tulips roses the million sunflowers daisy so what's the percentage that uh, it's likely to be a rose of course if you need to like evaluate more classes then <laughs> you'll need to have like uh, additional uh, uh, label data but for this um, at least the first one that comes up is roses so at least it is using 5% of the data is able to identify the correct class I mean for for this kind of scenarios you just want the class at least to be the the correct one that was uh, identified the next one the next we, we only have like two tasks uh, left so it's meant to be um, completed uh, soon so that at least we only have like five stations so at least we can take our uh, turns and then uh, hopefully all of us can um, uh, try the, uh, the workshop material in the in the IOT stations so from here um, you remember our downloaded models a while ago uh, one exception and one mobile net um, we have another program uh, that uh, we've prepared um, so the initial program that uh, comes with the uh, edge TPU uh, is just uh, it, it has a live classification but the live classification for that um, uh, script um, is initially prepared for if any one of you working with Raspberry Pi that usually works with Pi camera only um, so you need to uh, get that additional Pi camera and then use that in your Raspberry Pi but usually the Pi camera is quite flimsy and let's say if you're going to like invest like in more usage of that device uh, why not use a, a traditional webcam so at least you can have more utility with it so that's why we use this uh, um, normal Logitech webcam so that at least it has a microphone and it can, you can even use it as a normal webcam you can connect to your computer so at least uh, uh, it's more versatile that way but the existing script is not uh, working for that so we had to um, use another approach uh, with, uh, use another library for to enable the usage of the webcam that is I think another util or something and then use OpenCV to get the image for that and then um, we'll feed in the model like how we did a while ago in uh, classifying the image um, using the HTPU that we've compiled and then uh, the label is always image uh, net labels because all, both of these models are using uh, image net uh, data so I'm just going to copy this oh no I cannot copy this because we're going to need the camera now right so I'm going to run it inside VNC so I'm just using VNC here because uh, I have the Pi and I need to um, connect using my laptop but later on in the IoT uh, setup, you, need, you don't need the VNC because uh, the Raspberry Pi has an HDMI port and then the HDMI port connects directly to the monitor uh, on the setup. So let me just uh, show that last bit. So first one is Inception. So w when I run this, uh, notice if uh, you can notice anything about the accuracy or the, uh, if there's a lag in the camera. So I'm going to run an Inception using ImageNet. Um, can you see on the screen? Okay, it's trying, it's starting up. So this is image classification. So it's able to, it's able to identify this as a mic, a microphone mic, the monitor at the back, 
And then, is there any other? Oops. What is this? What is this? <coughs> some some furnace or at least a tripod or something. So, um, at, as you notice a while ago, it was able to identify the microphone. At least the accuracy part is there. But if you notice the the video, what do you notice? It's quite laggy. <laughs> We're using Inception, it's quite heavy, it's quite, uh, um, accuracy is there, but in terms of performance, um, you might think, in, in this uh, case where, oh, okay, yeah, what happened? Uh, yeah, so if I close the, the application right now, um, we've, uh, the, the script is designed to give us the frame per second, so it's interesting to know the approximation of frame per second is like 0 0.5. Just remember that for comparison later. So it's quite laggy, uh, but at least the, the accuracy is there. Next thing that we want to explore is how about mobile net? How, 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 how is mobile net? Uh, uh, how does it perform compared to um, to inception. So using the same script, the only difference that uh, we have here when running it is uh, the model that is being used. The previous one was um, uh, inception, now it's mobile net, the one that uh, we've compiled via the HTTP uh, compiler a while ago. So still image classification, not object detection, but let's see. So, still able to identify this. But as, as you can see, the, the camera compared to the inception a while ago is now, uh, at least the, it, it still lags, but at least it's less laggy than the, than the what do you call this? Who's a golf cart? Why is it a golf cart? <laughs> but uh, the, the accuracy is uh, also a concern, although it's, uh, the performance is quite uh, different. And if you go to the, the IoT stations later, uh, you'll also get a chance the, the, to open the code because the code we also modified so that here, if, if it detects something, the Raspberry Pi will uh, display green, uh, which is D for detect. And uh, if it doesn't, uh, let's say, no. If it doesn't detect anything, it will turn uh, red, which is X. But uh, you can see for yourself later. Uh, now it's uh, able to detect something, that's why it's showing green. If you go there in the stations, if it doesn't detect, it's like, if you're getting none, it will uh, 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 show uh, X. But you can modify this, you have the freedom to modify the code anyway, if you want to put hello world or something like that in one of the uh, stations. So the two of this, this is image uh, uh, classification, but uh, how about, um, how does it perform if we do uh, uh, object detection? Um, there's another uh, mobile, uh, another mo model that you can use um, for object detection. Uh, here in the workshop, we just use uh, the straightforward um, um, COCO model. Uh, so that you have the bounding boxes as well. So this is the last uh, demo um, that I'll show, and then you can uh, you're free to uh, try it out yourselves. Uh, um, update the uh, the scripts uh, if you need to. So I'll just remove this. By the way, the the Coco model is using mobile net. So if I place this uh, later. Um, yeah, J it will just accommodate um, if it if it uh, detects something different. So some are detecting as background. In fact, most are background. Yeah, maybe the the accuracy for this is not there yet. Maybe we need to. Uh, use another model for this. But for now, I only have this model, so that, that's why. At least you can see the, the bounding boxes. Black Widow, yeah. So 
Um, this is the last uh, task for uh, this workshop. And if you want to uh, try it doing yourself, modifying a bit of the, the models, trying to upload it, and then modifying some of the scripts, uh, you can search for APIs for Sunset also. And then you can modify and then interact it with uh, the Sunset uh, API. Uh, there are five um, IoT stations that we have set up for you. Uh, you can just take turns and uh, run through the workshop yourself. And that's basically it. Um, the next two uh, workshops will be uh, on um, PWA, which is for the, uh, the, I think we're going to use uh, TensorFlow.js there, and then followed by uh, um, deployment on Android. So for now, uh, if you want to try, you can uh, go there on the five stations and then uh, while the rest, if you're waiting, then maybe we can start with the uh, next workshop. Um, Neil.